Alright, state your name and where you work at and what grade you teach. Um, good morning, my name is Charles Belvin. I work at Lindbergh Middle School in Long Beach, California. Currently I'm teaching 6th grade English Language Arts and Accelerated History. Yeah, the first question is, what are your priorities in facilitating homes, schools, and community partnerships? Um, my priority is mainly the general welfare of my students, especially at this time, uh, the, social, uh, the social and emotional learning is the number one priority, uh, making sure that their mental health is intact. Right now, that is my priority in these times that we live in today. Okay. Question two. How do you get to know your students, parents, and local community? Communication. Communication is the key. Um, I talk to my students. I, I call my parents, not just in, in bad situations, but I call to congratulate them uh, with student achievements. I have the luxury of living in the neighborhood of the school, so I see many of my students and their parents in the neighborhood stores and, and supermarkets. Uh, I meet the parents at sporting events uh, for the school. I meet the parents when we go and we have band recitals and orchestra recitals and choir recitals. So uh, that's my way of speaking with the parents, the students, and the community. Okay. The third question is, how often do you communicate with your parents? Very often, uh, but it is an organic communication. Uh, I don't make it weird. I don't, I don't go out of my way uh, to go ahead and have a fake uh, artificial meeting, but it is normally an organic meeting. And of course, we have back to school and open house. Next question is, how do you and teachers from your school recognize the signs of abuse and neglect in your students? That's a tough question uh, because students act differently. They respond differently to different situations. So you can have two students from the same house and one will act up in school and be very violent and disruptive and the sibling would be withdrawn and very quiet and shut off from the world. So it's very hard, but usually being a, a language arts teacher in some of our writings, they will tell some of the things that they're dealing with. With that being said, the next question is, have you ever had to write a report for neglect or abuse? I have not. The next question is, what are some ways you and your school routinely, right, routinely involve parents in their children's school experience? Every month, we have a student of the month. Every quarter, we have awards for perfect attendance. And we don't just have perfect attendance and honor awards, but we have awards for most improvement. Um, we have an uh, award for most responsible students. So every month, there, every quarter, there are uh, awards that we give out and we do invite the parents. But every, every month, we do have a student of the month. The next question is, what, well, sorry, was there feedback that was used from what parents told you in the past that implemented your teaching now? The students, um, tell their parents everything that goes on in my classroom. And because I'm an open book and because I'm real and just a, a normal person, the parents uh, have come back to me many times and have told me and applauded me and thanked me just for being real and being honest with students um, and not being judgmental, but being firm and fair. And that was the most important thing. Uh, that parents have told me that they appreciate the fact that I'm firm and fair with a sense of humor. All right, the next question is, what are some, what are some of your greatest accomplishments over the years in this local school community? I've had many. Um, there, there, there's many students that I've had that came to my classroom in fourth grade that could not read. 
they left reading uh, when I taught math. In sixth grade, there were students that hated math, and they scored advanced proficient on the uh, state test in math and went on to love math and go to algebra. And, and many students, and I, I teach in the inner city and low socioeconomic community, but I've had many students come back to me, uh, not only with high school diplomas, but with college degrees. So those are some great accomplishments. Next question. Tell me some of your most challenging matters regarding work with families, parents, in this community. It is tough to teach students that don't want to learn. It is. And it's really tough to teach students that have parents where education is not priority uh, for one reason or another. Um, sometimes the parents have given up on the child. Uh, sometimes the parents was not a good student. Uh, sometimes the parent is dealing with life issues and things like that. Uh, sometimes they're homeless. Uh, sometimes you have students that um, you know, are dealing with past abuse situations and foster care situations. And that is heartbreaking when students give up uh, in sixth grade. That is heartbreaking. Okay. Next question are there any upcoming units, themes, or lessons in which parents can have input to be helpful? Uh, not this year. Not, not this year. This year is different. Okay. Uh, next question is, which will leads up to, should parents have input for your lessons? I, I've never thought of it. I mean, if it's healthy input, I'm always open to suggestions. However, we do have a standard a uh, California standard that we must adhere to. All right, next question. How does your school act as a resource for family? Our school is very resourceful. Uh, for We have uh, a family service center. It's called FRC, Family Resource Center. And students can go to uh, th this center for help, and they can have c uh, counseling for the whole family for whatever situation. <laughs> Uh, next question is, how has the roles changed and evolved due to COVID? And role, I mean, as a teacher. Um, well, of course, everything has been online. And um, you have become, um, the, the teacher has become uh, a sign of hope. Sometimes with that student being at home, the only thing that they have that gives them hope of normality was the teacher zooming in and that was the only normality that they were having at that time and so I, I I do believe that during this time teachers have had a more I would say ministerial role with the students well those are all the questions that we have thank you for taking the time to do this interview I know you have to get to school uh, thank you dad uh, that's it Thank you.